Hazard 4 Overwatch bag and some of the accessories you see here with it. We're going to go into a little bit of a deep dive of what the bag has to offer, what I use it for, what I think it needs more of, and kind of the pros and cons of what I think about it. So far it's been a nice little bag, but there are a couple issues that I see with it. And we'll get into all of that here in a second. This is the Hazard 4 Overwatch pack. Retail price is around $250. You'll find it online anywhere from typically $225 to $275. With a couple styles that might not be discontinued up to $350. I found this one on eBay, I believe it was, for around $170. So you can definitely find a good deal on the used ones. Uh, even used, they don't really have too many flaws because there's a nice rugged bag. And you shouldn't see too many problems with them on the used market other than people just get the bag and they realize it's not exactly what they wanted or thought it would be. I have to admit that when I got this I thought it was going to be a little different than how it actually is. But there's a good amount of things good with this bag that I wound up liking over its flaws and it kind of made it worth it for me. So this is the Hazard for Overwatch in FDE, Dark Desert, Earth. Coyote Tan, whatever you people call it nowadays. The, all the tactical world calls it something different every week. But the main idea behind this bag is the roll top and roll bottom. With that, you can unroll it all the way out up top. And you get the same length on the bottom by undoing the straps. And it rolls all the way out. So you can get a pretty pretty good sized long gun in there. Uh, if you have a hunting rifle, uh, PRS, precision rifle series type rifle, anything with a fixed stock and a long barrel, you'll be able to fit it in this pretty easily without having to take anything down, without needing a folding stock, without having to have a quick detach system for the barrel. If you have an AR with a fixed stock and a 20 inch barrel, you won't have to take the upper off the lower in order to get everything kind of configured inside of it. The roll top does have some velcro up here so that if it's too big for the main pouch you can slide it straight down and in a little bit I'll actually show you a couple examples of how I carry guns in here but first we're going to go around the whole bag. On the front of the pack we have two main pouches. You have your your eyewear pouch, there's not really big enough for much besides some eyewear, maybe a box of ammo. It is lined with uh, microfiber on this side, not on this side, this side is the regular Cordura or whatever fabric they use. Uh, but it's nice, it's a hard shell, kind of like the Oakley eyeglass cases. Uh, like I said, you can fit a couple pieces of eyewear in there, a phone, something that you don't want to get scratched up. And uh, or banged up because it's a nice hard shell. On the front pouch, we have some molly webbing. You have some drain ports on the bottom in case something gets wet in there. You have a couple pieces of Velcro for your tactical Timmy patches. And a little D link loop. You can put some gloves on there, maybe a uh, glow stick or an IR stick, anything you want to put on here that you might need on the outside. Maybe a piece of like braided 550 cord, something like that that you can use. You can always figure out something to do with a little, a little hook right there. And you go inside and you have a nice kind of administrative pouch. You have these two sets of loops here, little stretchy fabric loops. I put a uh, Glock 17 mag in here usually. And then on this side, it's a little too small for a Glock 17 mag, but you can kind of stretch it out to work. Uh, mine is stretched out a little bit, but if you don't want to do that, you can put a flashlight or a baton if you have like an ASP. Um, there's plenty of things you can do with that. You have your two pen holders here. You got a little pouch here. I don't know what you'd use that for. Maybe a multi-tool. That would fit right in there perfectly. And you got your little tool going on. Fits. Real nice. So you got that. 
You've got a little bigger pouch up here that'd be good for a small notebook. You've got a Velcro pouch all the way up top. That'll fit a bigger notebook. You could put maps. You can put pretty much anything you want up there. And then a smaller Velcro pouch that's a full flap. Uh, probably a phone, something that you don't want to get dusty or dirty if dirt gets into it. A nice Velcro flap holding that shut. And then the space material on the back of that. Moving back, we have the next bigger pouch. That's okay, that fell over. I don't really care. Next bigger pouch is just an open pouch. There's no pockets or anything in here. I typically put my gridded pad in here. So here we are, I have my gridded pouch. This is kind of just an assortment of things that I always forget to take to the range. Uh, defensive pistol mag, I got some tools, I got mag loaders, field lube, I got some boar snakes, stuff like that. I'll do a full video on that at some other point. Fits right in there. And then I have my chronograph set up. If I taking that to the range, that fits right in. Closes right up. This is typically something that I would leave in this bag or my other bag if I'm going to the range because, again, it's things that I always forget to take with me. Glasses, I'll usually throw some extra ear pro in there that are useful when I'm at the range. So on the left side of the bag, left side if I had the bag on, I have the Hazard 4 Jelly Roll and a Tactical Tailor, just a little accessory pouch. The Jelly Roll, I kind of thought would have been bigger. It's just a nice padded pouch. It's made for like camera lenses and things like that. It's, it's padded on the top. It has a little pouch up top. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. And then it's padded all around. It would be good for camera lenses, but I don't carry those around. I typically put my suppressors in there when I'm going to the range to keep them separate from everything, keep all the paperwork in there. On the bottom, we have the Tactical Tailor little accessory pouch. Uh, me and a buddy of mine got a deal on a bulk order. It comes pretty pretty good. Let's see. Yep. Just a, a typical pouch. You got uh, a little mesh, little pouch in here. You got some pieces of stretchy fabric, a little cord thing. I guess if you want to put it up, if you need to open it, you can open it real quick. It does come with a little pouch that's a square. These are made, it says here, for night vision optics. Your uh, PVS-14. I don't have night vision yet. So this I typically just put in magazines. It fits about five P mags, or hex mags, or lancer mags, whatever we want. Fits about five of them in one of these. If unless you want to squeeze another one in, you might be able to, but it might stretch it. Or I put in my ammo cases for my reloading when I'm testing reloads. I'll throw them in here. Uh, you can fit boxes of ammo. I think with the f if you put four magazines, you can fit a couple boxes of ammo up the sides and the front. If you want to have just like a just a good little bit of extra with you and on the outside it has molly webbing same with the jelly roller some molly webbing though it's in a circle pattern so I'm not too sure how useful that would be and both top and bottom do have straps that come around and keep everything tight uh, I don't know molly is pretty tight by itself but if you want to keep everything extra tight you can keep it strapped together and then on this side, I just have two of the Tactical Tailor pouches. Again, magazines, ammo, and I think that all that on the outside kind of kind of helps uh, one of the major flaws that was with the base bag. These are all separate. I had to buy those separately. So if you're going into this bag and don't plan on putting any side pouches, it might be a little small and not as much space as you would hope. That gets us to the main compartment of the bag, and you might be thinking, well, isn't that what the top little port is for? It is, but there's another way to get into the main compartment, and that is through another set of zippers that fold down and get you inside the bag. Inside the bag, there are two sets of straps for strapping your guns in there and putting them in, and it's just a big open space, and one of the easiest ways to deal with it is to just lay it flat. And you can see that it's kind of like a suitcase at this point. It just has the four walls. You can get into the bottom roll from here. You can get into the top roll from here. You can route your 
water bladder through. I'll talk about that a little bit later through a little port up top. And it's a nice big section. So you think, okay, well, what can you put in this bag in terms of guns, in terms of other things? And we'll see what we can get in there and see how it looks. First thing you can put inside the bag is Tactical Cat. Tactical Cat likes being in small spaces, but she doesn't understand what her job is. She's supposed to be a guard cat, and she's very bad at it. Right, cat? My usual setup uh, right now is I'm working with my 300 Blackout pistol for some load development. Uh, usually I'll take the 5.56 upper with me just to use it while I'm there. So what I'll typically do right now is I'll take each upper. Each upper fits right in the, in the main compartment without having to uh, unroll the top or the bottom. And then I'll just put the, the lower in there with everything in there and that fits perfectly. I don't have to have the top unrolled, I don't have to have the bottom unrolled. Everything kind of just fits in very nicely and works pretty well. But those are both 10 and a half inch barrels. This is an M16 A2 clone with a fixed butt stock and a 20 inch barrel. And if I didn't feel like taking the upper part from the lower, I would just unroll, but you can see right away that it's still a lot taller than the bag. So what I would have to do is start loosening up the bottom. It has a nice little retention system down at the bottom for the straps. A little Velcro enclosure keeps the straps good and the cat is now attacking the straps. And the bottom is pretty captive. It, I don't think you really undo the straps all the way. If you undo them enough for it to roll out. But the straps kind of keep it from unrolling all the way. You can actually access the bottom. I never actually had it unrolled that much, so I never needed to. But at this point, you would take the rifle, open up the top. slide it right down through. And then pick it up. And now the muzzle is actually about right here on the back. You can see that it goes all the way through. I can put this on. And I'm now able to walk around with the full rifle on my back. I don't know if we'll be able to get a better shot of this because I don't really have any room left but it does hang down below the butt probably not too comfortable on the motorcycle with that below the butt because it would need to be up a bit higher but it's still even if that rode up a bit it wouldn't be too bad you can see on the sides here we didn't really talk about it I have a, some padded uh, kidney belt area another little D-ring for gloves. It does have molly on it. But you can fit a nice long rifle. This is the longest rifle I have. I don't have a more long distance precision oriented rifle or a hunting rifle that's a bit longer. I have this and it works pretty well. Before I leave off, I think I go over some pros and cons. The pros, it's, it's a great bag, it has a lot of space when you use it in terms of guns, in terms of gear. I, after adding all the pouches, it was, uh, it was a pretty good setup. I was able to get a lot of what I need in it, and it's a good bit of storage in there. And it's pretty rugged. I got it for a good price. That's up to you to find a good price for it if you want this bag. That's also kind of a con as a price. It is expensive if you don't find a deal on it. So that's one thing you might have to just wait around for as a good deal. Uh, there isn't a lot of space in terms of just like throwing things into a backpack. There's not a lot of volume for things other than your guns. But it is mainly a gun backpacking pack. It isn't really made for 
what I use it for, which is the motorcycle riding going to and from the range. Um, it's not like some of my other bags where they're kind of dual use, but all my all my rifle bags pretty much are just made for rifles. I had a little bit more hopes with this one that I could use it for things other than rifles, even though it was a roll top and roll bottom. I don't think it would be too bad, it's just it doesn't have the comp main compartment of this isn't compartment compartmentalized enough that I can kind of use it for other things and not be worried about things falling around and just getting lost in there. But there is a lot of there's a lot of customization you can do with this bag. There's a lot that can go on with it. And uh, I can't wait to see what else I figure out with it and do with it. Well, thanks for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to give it a like, if you dislike to give it a dislike. And if you did dislike it, please let me know in the comments down below why so I can make this channel better for both you and me. I'm East Philly, and I'll see you all next time.